Welcome to another episode of Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I am Jason Bowman and I love cars. I hope you enjoy my story of the Nissan Z31 300ZX. To be honest, the Z31 was another one of those cars I didn't know a lot about before starting this project. My first memory of the Z31 was from kindergarten. Miss Noble, my kindergarten teacher, had a wine metallic 300ZX. She was a fashionable lady. To my five-year-old eye, she looked like someone straight out of an MTV music video. The 300ZX was prevalent in 1980s toys. I had a Z31 Hot Wheels car and a Radio Shack 300ZX lock car. In my small middle-class Ontario, Canada town, the 300ZXs were a familiar sight. Oddly, I couldn't find any movies with Z31 300ZXs in them. My guess is Nissan put all of its marketing money into racing and TV commercials. Today there's a new power on the road. Today all eyes are on the sports car news of the decade. The first Nissan 300ZX. Come alive, come and drive. Every now and then you'll come across a road like this. That's when more than ever you'll want a car like this. The Nissan 300ZX Turbo. You flick the adjustable suspension to firm and go for it. No wonder Motor Trend Magazine called this new 300ZX the best all-around Z car ever built. The 300ZX was assembled in Hiroshima, Japan. It was designed by Kazumasi Takaji and his team. The main market for the Z cars has always been North America. The Z31 was introduced in North America in October 1983. Sales were brisk with 270,144 customers saying yes. yes to the Nissan 300ZX between 1984 and 1989. The Z31 was the highest volume Z car for Nissan. Advertising centered around performance, heritage, and racing pedigree. Nissan was obviously proud of the V6 engine, selectable suspension, advanced technology, and aerodynamics as these points made it into all of their commercials. The 300ZX had increased power and better aerodynamics than the last generation of 280ZXs. The Z31 had a slippery drag coefficiency of 0.30, which is still excellent even by today's standards. It was powered by a mass-produced V6 engine, which was a first for a Japanese automaker. Previous Z cars were powered by inline six-cylinder engines. Nissan claimed the new V6 to be more compact and efficient engine package than the inline sixes it replaced. Engines. North American 300ZXs had two engine choices. VG30E. The base model car got the single overhead cam naturally aspirated 3-liter V6 that produced 160 horsepower and 173 foot-pounds of torque. The bore was 3.43 inches and the stroke was 3.27 inches. VG30ET. The 300ZX Turbo got the 3 liter single overhead cam V6 with a single Garrett T3 turbocharger with 6.8 psi of boost and 7.8 to 1 compression ratio. The USDM version produced 200 horsepower and 227 foot pounds of torque. The W Series VG30 was released in April 1987. Horsepower was increased to 205 horsepower. 1987 models featured a T3 turbocharger at 6.8 PSI of boost. In 1988, the compression ratio was changed to 8.3 to 1 and the turbocharger was also changed to a single Garrett T25 turbocharger at 4.5 PSI to reduce turbo lag. The VG30 engine was designated Type A or Type B from 1984 to March 1987. While engines from April 1987 to 1989 were designated W, the W series engines featured fully floating piston wrist pins and redesigned water jackets for additional cooling. These W engines were also equipped with self-adjusting hydraulic lifters. Manual Transmissions From 1984 to 1989, the Z31 NA had a FS5W71C Nissan 5-speed transmission. Experts say this is the medium strength option. The 1984-1986 Z31 Turbo had the FS5R90A Borg Warner T5 5-speed transmission. Experts claim these are the weakest of the three options. The 1987-1989 Z31 Turbo had an FS5R30A Nissan Turbo 5-speed. This is considered to be the strongest unit. Automatic Transmission E4N71B. The E4N71B was a conventional four speed automatic transmission. They were all equipped with a torque converter lockup function. Differential. All 300ZXs used an R200 unit. The R200 differential was used in many of Nissan's cars, including Sylvia's, Skylines, and 350Zs, just to name a few. 
84 to 87 Z31 NAs had a 3.7 to 1 open rear end. 88 to 89 Z31 NAs had a 3.9 to 1 open rear end. 84 to 86 Z31 turbos had a 3.54 to 1 open rear end. 0986 to 0487 Z31 turbos had a 3.7 to 1 open rear end. 0487 to 89 Z31 turbos had a 3.7 to 1 clutch LSD rear end. 0188 to 0488 Z31 Shiro Specials had a 3.7 to 1 viscous LSD. Suspension. Front. McPherson struts. Rear. Semi-trailing arm with coil springs and tube shocks. Turbocharged cars had three-way electronically adjustable shock absorbers. Stock tire information. The 300ZX wore three different size tires. 14 by 5 and a half inch wheels with 195-70R14 tires. 15 by 6 and a half inch wheels wore 215-60R15 tires. 16 by 7 inch wheels wore 225-50R16 tires. Wheels. Number 1. 1984 to 1985 non-turbo. Number 2. 1984 50th anniversary turbo. Number 3. 1986 non-turbo. Number 4. 1986 turbo. Number 5. 1988 and 1989 turbo. Number 6, 1984 and 1985 turbo. Number 7, 1987 to 1989 turbo. Number 8, 1988 Shiro Special. Number 9, um, snazzy, uh, 14-inch hubcaps. Style and evolution. The Z31's styling stayed mostly the same over the six-year production run. The body was lightly restyled in 1986 with flared fenders, side skirts, and 16-inch wheels for the turbo. Trim pieces were painted body color, and the hood scoop was shaved. Another restyle occurred in 1987. The restyle included more aerodynamic bumpers, 9004 bulb-based headlamps that replaced the 6054 sealed beam headlights. The fog lamps moved from beside the headlights into the front air dam. A narrow set of taillights running the entire width of the car replaced the earlier two-row taillights and the 300ZX titled reflector. The 300ZX was the first car in history to have a central brake light with LED. It was located on the top of the rear hatch. Cars produced from 1984 to 1985 are referred to as Zenki models, pre-facelift, while cars produced from 1987 to 1989 are known as Kuki, post-facelift models. The 1986 models are known as Chuki, middle period, models because they share some styling cues with the Zenki and some styling cues from the Kuki. The 1986 Chuki featured the flared fenders of an 8789 model and also had the side skirts of the anniversary edition while maintaining the headlights and taillights from the 8485 models. Interior. The 300ZX was praised for its comfy adjustable seats and large cargo capacity. The voice activated warnings are pure 80s gold and the voice has been nicknamed Bitchy Betty. The voice warning system has five different left messages. They are door. left door is open. Left door is open. Right door is open. Right door is open. Lights are on. Lights are Fuel on. Fuel level is low. Fuel level is low. Parking brake is on. Parking brake is on. You are given a choice between a totally rad 80s digital cluster featuring a cool self-diagnostic mode or boring old analog gauges. The interior, like the exterior, didn't change that much. The clusters changed over time, as did the steering wheels. The 300ZX was available in two body styles, 2-seater or 2 plus 2. Stereos. Body Sonic seats have transducers that are built into the seats, four in the base and four in the back. They vibrate with the music, simulating the feeling you would normally get with subwoofers. There are controls in the center console to turn the feature on or off and adjust the intensity. How cool is that? Performance. The Z31 was a very quick car by 1984 standards, going 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds and finishing the quarter mile in 15.5 seconds, as reported by MotorWeek. The 0 to 60 Times website, one of my favorite bench racing sites, has it listed a little quicker at 0 to 60 in 7.3 and the quarter mile in 15.4. I'm assuming the difference is between automatic and standard transmissions. I'm pretty open minded about cars. But I must admit, going into this project, I considered the Z31 to be more of a Mrs. Noble, excessive 80s fashion accessory, more than a true sports car. I should buy one before I say this, but don't believe the hype. Grassroots Motorsports magazine tested all the Zs on track, and the plushy Boulevard Cruiser 300ZX actually equaled the legendary 240Z's lap times. Quote, The softness of the 300ZX, our drivers concluded, seemed to mask its speed. 
The Z31's top speed was limited to 135 miles per hour, but Motor Trend reported a 153 mile per hour top speed with the electronic speed limiter disabled, making the 300ZX the fastest car from Japan in 1988. The Z31 does not have a huge aftermarket support, but it appears to have some aftermarket support. Coilover suspension kits are available to stiffen up the notoriously over-soft ride. The Z31, like all Z cars before it, suffer from too much rear negative camber. It was practically designed out of the Z31, and the problem is a lot less pronounced than earlier cars. Some report that coilovers at near stock ride height correct the problem, or there is bolt-in aftermarket adjustable camber kits. On the extreme side of things, there is a kit to replace the rear suspension entirely with an S13 or S14 Silvia 240SX rear subframe. That kit requires some serious cutting and welding. I also found 13-inch big brake kits. On the engine side of things, the VG30ET has a decent amount of aftermarket support. Stronger connecting rods, forged pistons, and lumpier camshafts, and just about anything else your lust for more speed can envision. I love engine spops, and if you do too, this is your dream car. The engine compartment and transmission tunnel are huge. Just about anything will fit in there. The VG30DE came in the Z31 in Japan from the factory, therefore, the swap I found most compelling was the VG30DET, aka a dual overhead cam turbo V6 from Japanese sedans, and the VG30DETT, Z32 300ZX twin turbo engine, bolt right in. The engine compartment in the Z31 is much larger than the Z32, making this engine actually serviceable once installed. The Z31 had an RV20 DET in Japan. So that whole engine family also bolts right in, aka every Skyline engine you can dream of. On the sacrilegious side of engine swaps, the Toyota 2JZ and practically any American V8 is an easy fit. LS engine mount kits are available, making that swap a bolt in too. Heck, some guy even swapped in a turbo diesel. Motorsport. The Z31 has been raced in every conceivable form of motorsport. Drag racing. That Z31 took that Corvette to Gapplebee's. Tarmac rallies? To wind what? his way toward the bridge in the final turn of the final lap. Robin's valiant fight will come up short and he will settle for third spot. The checkered flag falls on Paul Newman. First three-time winner in the Valvoline Road Racing Classic. Showroom stock? Road Atlanta, site of the Sports Car Club of America Championships and another milestone for Nissan. Pepe Pombo raced his street legal 300ZX to victory in the showroom stock class. Drifting. <laughs> For those of you without motorsport pulsing through their veins, the Z31 is an excellent grand touring car. The 300ZX is comfortable and fast. It eats up miles effortlessly. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope! Run. Buying a Z31 300ZX. The time to buy a Z31 300ZX is now or perhaps before this video came out. The Z31s are starting to appreciate in value. Haggerty claims the average value to be $12,200. $39,500 will get you a concourse example. $26,400 will get you an excellent one. $12,200 for a good one. $8,300 for a fair one. The 300ZX has suffered the same fate as the poor old C4 Corvette. Like the C4, the 300ZX was made in huge numbers. Many of these poor things have been through the ringer. Beaters can be had for less than $1,000, which is incredible considering the high build quality, tunability, and pure unadulterated 80s coolness. Which one to buy is buyer's preference, but the experts agree the anniversary edition is the best of the breed. Buying tips. Try to view a perspective Z when the engine is completely cold. Warm engines can mask numerous problems, so ask the seller not to warm up the car before you get there. Look for recent oil chain stickers. It's important that any turbo car gets its oil changed every 5,000 kilometers. 
Ensure the timing belt has been changed at proper intervals. Experts suggest changing the timing belt every 60,000 miles, 100,000 kilometers, or every six years. Rust check. The Z31 is far less prone to rust than previous seeds, but the tin worm still enjoys a good hearty meal in a few areas. The main areas you want to check are under the tool kit, above the muffler at the back and underneath the spare tire. Rust under the spare tire is especially bad. If it were to rust through, it would be very difficult to fix. Thanks for watching my story of the Z31 300ZX. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment. Hopefully we'll see you next time. What